my name is Peter Bruninger, and I'm here with Bruce from Still Points. Bruce, how are you? Fine. And uh, today we're on a great adventure. We're putting new stands into Peter's domain. What do we have here? Well, we, we give you a level because you need a level to level the rack and the shelves and everything like that. And uh, these are the various parts to it, but we also give you a kit, okay? And in this kit, we give you everything you need to build a still points properly. We give you the tools that you need. Mm -hmm. We give you white gloves to keep it clean. We mm -hmm. give you a micro cloth and a solution to keep uh, the rack clean and, and um, you know, after you get it done, put together, you can wipe it down and it'll look like brand new. And, and uh, uh, so again, Still Points is a company that believes everything should be complete. That you should not have to run out and do anything, find anything. Uh, you know, it's just, it should be simple, straightforward for you to put together. Great. That's a great thing because a lot of times when we get sent items, we don't have the proper tools. It's great to have everything included. And Bruce, I see we're about to put the stands together, the racks together. Uh, let's. Uh, can you show us how this is done, please? Absolutely, Peter. Uh, as we showed you before with the box, uh, you get all the tools you need and the gloves you need. And, and again, the package of screws that give you every screw. So the first thing we do in assembling a rack is we take the largest driver here, Allen Head, and with the... Um, nuts facing down towards the technology pocket. We put the crossbars on and as you see Peter, uh, not only are we attaching it with a large uh, Allen screw, but uh, as you can see on our mass, the, the huge studding that holds the rack. And so what we want to do again, facing downward so you don't see the screw, so you twist a little bit and it's a self-locating lug so once you screw it in it will locate the proper position for it and you want to make these good and tight okay when you when you build a frame like this the frame should not be able to wobble at all okay mm -hmm. um, we believe in low mass uh, and not storing energy as, as a principle okay but it is to be very rigid so just because it looks skeletal doesn't mean it's uh, floppy. So again, what you're going to see me doing, four, uh, four screws into the crossbar, and we are a fully assembled mask. So for your first step, it's, it's that's easy, well, four screws. Well, okay. And then what I do is I tighten these very good. Now what I'm going to do is take my frame, Turn it upside down, and now I want to try to wobble it. Okay. If you can wobble it, your bolts are not tight enough. Okay. It should be just solid and rigid. Now the next thing we're going to do is we take the bases. Our quarter twenty screw goes in here. We take the smallest wrench again, and we tighten it into the technology pocket. And again, you, you see our technology pocket. This is the same pocket that you see in our Ultra SS. Okay? Most of our technology is all built around one motor system. And so inside of here are bearings uh, that are precisely stacked and they're designed to take away uh, ultra band micro vibrations. They also supply a uh, isolation because there's no vertical path through them. Uh, so this again, none of this in our racks or any other technology that we do is, is dampening. It is all moving uh, the vibrations and, and not giving them any vertical path. So what we've done is uh, we're just going to put the four feet on and I always tighten the lug into the foot because you don't want it loosening when you're trying to adjust the height and leveling of the stand. And again, we, we always take it down tight. All of our technology goes the same. You take it down to where it's tight. Then you can back it off just a quarter of a turn, just like this. Or anything that you need to, uh, uh, to um, uh, level it. Uh, again, it's designed to uh, be loose. When you set it down and put it under pressure, there is no looseness that locks all the bearings up in the right position. 
So uh, again, uh, while it's loose when it's, it's just sitting here, it, it's anything but loose when you uh, put it together properly. Okay, and so after we get the frames all built, the next thing we want to do is go to the leveling. And the first thing I want to do is check my cross leveling. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the outside here, and we want to check our side-to-side -side leveling. And as you can see, both are very level on this stand. Mm -hmm. But uh, we adjust the feet down here to level up here. So initially, you want to get your frame leveled, okay? And again, Still Point supplies you with a very nice level that you can do this on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just level up the stands and, and you're ready to start putting the support bars on. Well, Peter, let's finish the stand that uh, we started uh, just a little while ago. Good. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how to complete it. Obviously, we've completed one stand already and have equipment pre uh, prepped for uh, service. So... Um, Beautiful how the Niagara equipment looks on uh, the rack as it all matches and that type of stuff. Yeah, it really um, is. It, it, you know, beautiful equipment deserves to stand out. And uh, one of the nice things about Still Point's rack is that we're such a minimal approach, low energy storage, that uh, we make the equipment stand out. And uh, you, you want your beautiful equipment that you purchase. And a lot of people buy it because of the looks and that type of stuff. So uh, our stands allow the equipment to emphasize itself. Well, Bruce, I'd like to add to that because uh, since we set this equipment up uh, just a little over 20 minutes ago, I've never seen the Niagara equipment look so beautiful. It's no, just, thank you, yep, Peter. Yep. But uh, again, it's the equipment itself. Niagara is a wonderful company. Um, so what we're going to do, we, we yesterday, I meant, uh, before we started with uh, the rack, we put the crossbars in on the frames, put the bases on. So today we're going to, now we're going to build out the rest of the rack. And I'm going to bring this out so you people can see it a little bit nicer. And we've laid everything out. So uh, first thing we do today now is we start at putting the support bars in. The support bars are uh, the products that actually hold the uh, shelving, the grid, or the acrylic in the, either case that you use. And uh, we um, wedge them in between the wires. There's a, you can see the slit in the bar to accept the wire. And uh, that's threaded on the inside. You're going to see us put a screw in there. Uh, that screw, by the way, uh, the detail that uh, Still Points pays attention to, that screw has a little ceramic bearing in the tip of it. And that ceramic bearing uh, is what clamps the aircraft wire. And, and uh, it is for resonance, but it's also, uh, we do not want to cut that aircraft wire. This wire that you see here is tensioned to 2,200 pounds. So the weight carrying capability of one of our racks is 2,200 pounds. Each of these is tensioned to 2,200 pounds. And uh, we do not want to cut that wire. Uh, if you would actually cut one strand of that wire, it would roll up and act just like a razor blade. I mean, it, it doesn't give, it'll cut you. So again, not only from a sonics standpoint, but from a durability standpoint, we press a ceramic bearing into this little screw. Now, Bruce, you had mentioned to me those the little screws. These have also been cryoed three times, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, even our little adapters, any of our screws that you see, we cryo these products uh, three times, mm -hmm. different processes each time. We own our own cryo tanks. We, we, uh, Paul has become an expert at cryoing metal, and, and so uh, we have a very uh, a great way of doing it, and all of our products are, are cryoed many, many times at, with different phases, with different steps. Uh, as, as you're in bar metal, you cryo at one point. As you get to machine metal, you cryo it. When you get to finno machine, you cryo it with a different method each time. So this is a little, a little details that you really don't see in the rack from a look standpoint, but vitally important to how successful we are in not and having very neutral products that don't steal any dynamics from it. So I'm going to start by uh, inserting these little uh, screws with the ceramic bearings into the end of the rod like this. Okay, And uh, as I talked before, um, you ask how hard can you tighten these. 
and you want to get these really firm. Again, uh, if you have 225 pounds on a shelf, which is a bearing weight on one of our shelves, okay, um, you uh, really want to have that quite tight. Now, if you over tighten, if you would over tighten the screw into the uh, uh, wire, it's going to expand the uh, C at the end of the rod and you won't be able to get the cap on. And if that's the case, then you just back it off a, a, a 30 seconds of a turn until you can get your scrap, your cap on. So again, the, the rod and the, the system itself will tell you that you have it too tight. Otherwise, than that, tighten it all you want. Again, the last thing we want or anything slipping. That brings us to the other conversation in the rack. What's unique about our rack compared to all of the other high-end racks or most of them that you have is we have a continually adjustable platform uh, so that you can not only can you adjust the height, you change the equipment, you don't have to have that big space, um, you don't have to reconfigure the whole rack, you can change the level of any shelf at any time. Uh, with the four-point leveling that we give you on our support bars, one of the interesting things, and with our grid leveling, one of the interesting things you can do is you can level a warp chassis. If you have a warp chassis, and believe me, they're out there, if you have a warp chassis on a, um, a transport uh, or any device like that, any tube electronics, you really want it level, you really want it all in contact, and so by having all the multiple leveling I can level the rack with the base, I can level the uh, support bars, I can level the grid with, with the uh, uh, feet. So you have so many points of leveling that there's no excuse that you, any piece of equipment should never be leveled on this rack. Okay, Bruce, before we put the cross members on, let's uh, show everybody how the racks are leveled. Okay, so uh, the first thing you do to level a rack is go onto the crossbar right here and make sure that you level. Then I usually straddle the two points right here to make sure my front and back is level, okay, on both sides. And once that's leveled, now I can level uh, the uh, grids themselves. So now what I'm going to do is I, I span between the three technology pockets, and I look here. I see that I'm just slightly not level this way, so I bring it up just a fraction. Now I'm level. Now I go to the back bar like this, I put it over here, I look at my leveling here, I see this is, just needs to be down a little bit, and so I'm going to drop this just to, to get the bubble right in the middle, as you, everybody knows how to use the level I hope, and then I go over here to this side, and I do exactly the same thing. This one needs to be dropped just a notch, like that. Now our top is leveled here. Um, I can tighten these screws down so they're nice and tight, okay. And now you can put the end caps on. Right, well, uh, I and, can, but and... first I want to, before I do that, what I want to do, this uh, Peter's racks here are uh, two grids and an acrylic. So, um, uh, and the purpose of the acrylic is uh, if you have standalone or smaller components or anything like that, standalone motor turntable, you want the acrylic. Uh, our acrylic is good performing. It's not as good at performing as our grid because you have metal to metal contact. Also, uh, if you use our acrylic shelf, it, it is good to use feet on top of it. Otherwise, you're suffering the limitations of the manufacturer's feet when it contacts the acrylic. Now, one other thing I'll show you is, Peter, you see how the technology pockets are raised above the bar here? And, and that allows this piece of acrylic to float on our technology pockets. So it's not actually resting on the bar. It, we actually screw it right into the technology pocket. So I'm lining up my holes like this. Now I take the middle size wrench that comes in our kit and uh, the hex head screws like this and I line up my holes like this and uh, we screw this down solid to the technology pocket. Again, it's not making contact with the bar uh, and I usually do the four corners first 
And if you, uh, when you start, if you just lift up the acrylic ever so slightly, you can uh, get a good bite into it. And I think this is a good point to tell the viewers about the technology pockets themselves. Right. Uh, one of the reasons our racks are the price they are is each one of these technology pockets you see in a bar, and there's three in each bar like this, okay? Each one of these technology pockets is identical to our $250 foot, the Ultra SS. So when you look at one shelf here, um, whether it be a grid or acrylic, we start just in the support bars with six pockets of $250 or uh, to uh, a dollar layman, uh, $1,500 worth of our feet are in each shelf of this rack. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I'll finish up uh, with the uh, screws, locking this down. And again, uh, sometimes you want to just slightly lift it up so that you can get the right um, threading on these screws and these can go firm you don't have to really wrench them in because again it's all floating um, make sure you use the beveled side screw side of the acrylic uh, because there's a straight hole and a beveled hole of course the head cap sits down into the beveled hole so there you go Peter we have a, a one shelf with the acrylic already done now we'll go to the grids the next two shelves in the grids Good, so let's now, we're going to install four of the cross posts now. Yes. Here so, we go. Okay. So we wedge them in like this. They need to be wedged in. Uh, it's a very tight fit. And uh, I usually will put two back to back like this. Um, and again, you can, you can add, the beauty of our racks is you could add uh, extra uh, shelves to it at any point. Uh, so you can, uh, if you need another equipment and you've gone to smaller equipment, uh, you can just add extra shelves in um, and, and accomplish your needs uh, on the rack system. And you don't have to dismantle it to do it, you actually can, uh, you just need about a, enough angle to uh, wedge a bar in and you're, you're really well. Yeah, I so, see what you're saying, because there are many, many racks, you have to disassemble the whole rack to put an, another shelf in. That's right, yep. and so now I'm just putting the little uh, ceramic tipped uh, screws back in here, just like the other ones, and I will proceed to leveling it just like you saw me level the top one, and, and then we'll, uh, we'll put the grid on. Okay, so Bruce, what are you doing now? Um, I'm taking the half inch screws from uh, the kit with the grids okay. and I'm screwing them into the technology pocket because this is how we'll attach the grid onto these screws. Okay. So I'm taking again the half inch screw and all I'm doing is uh, screwing these each into the technology pockets. And, uh, and then you can get a good look at it here. Viewers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know again uh, once I get them all screwed in here I'll go back through and tighten them with the wrench. Um, you don't have to really screw these in tight. You just, uh, uh, not real tight, but you just want them snug. So all I'll basically do, take the small wrench here and just tighten them down just uh, snug. So now, Peter, we're going to take the crossbars, which go in here. And uh, the way these go on is you'll see a half side and a full side. And the half side always goes into the center technology. So I'm just going to line these up and we'll put this one like this. And this one will come in like this. And then these go across like this. Okay. And this one goes under and up and like that. And so now we've made the grid. Now what I want to do is I want to press this grid down and I want to make sure that each of these pocket technologies and the metal rod is sitting on there. That you don't have a space in any of those. So this is a solid grid. I don't have to do any leveling. So now that I'm done and I know I don't have to do any leveling, on this shelf I can put the cap on and, and screw the cap on. 
And remember I said these should go on easy. If you have a hard time getting those on, you need to back off the screw just a fraction. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's grid one. Here we go very easily, grid two. And uh, the reason we went to the grid structure is, uh, as good as the acrylic is, again, you have uh, two unique problems that you run into. One is that the uh, acrylic does not transfer as fast of, uh, of uh, micro vibration as the metal does. And, and two, on the acrylic, you often have the manufacturer's feet in contact with the acrylic unless you use feet. So with the acrylic, we always advise using feet but that adds added expense. You, you'll get plenty of performance out of the acrylic, but again, if you want our ultimate performance, uh, a grid is much more readily to give it. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, on your system, uh, we're using the Ultra 6. So you could use the Mini, you could use the SS, you could use the 5, we don't advise it, that's more for loudspeakers now. And the 6 was one that we particularly designed for electronics. It's our ultimate product. Even if you don't have a rack, you put sixes under your system, you're going to be shocked. Again, much like you always mentioned, we're not an accessory, we're a necessity. When you hear the difference on any piece of electronics that still points it does, uh, it, it will be the first time you've ever heard that information. Again, it's been locked in your system. Remember, our feet make no sound at all. Okay, there's nothing in here that makes any music, any sound, any frequency, anything like that. We're in an elimination process. We take out micro vibrations, very low amplitude micro vibrations from 20 to uh, kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. Why we don't shift tonality at all is we do not even play in the tonality region. So we're, we're, we're free of shifting tonality, uh, but we do give you this removal of these micro vibrations, which when they sing like a chorus, are very destructive into resolution, into harmonic structure, into imaging, into spatiality. These are all the areas that you'll find us effective. So because we're using the Nagra on here, we're going to space these very tightly here. Um, as you see on the other rack where we put the pieces side by side. If you have small equipment, you can, you can place them side by side on our feet and, and put two pieces isolated on one shelf, especially on the 26 inch shelf. 20 is a little tighter on that. Um, and then of course we do a 40 wide, which allows you to really um, uh, put two separate shelves. It has six technology pockets across. Uh, and uh, that, that's again another uh, rack uh, for people's information. Our, our masks come in uh, 28, 32, and 42 tall, okay? And our widths are 20, 26 like this, and if you have a standalone motor turntable or big turntable, you're going to need the 26 inch width, but 26 inch and then a 40 inch, which is a double wide. Okay, so now we've got this position all set up for taking a piece of equipment. Uh, we're ready to roll and start putting equipment in. So this is a basically how you assemble a rack, and um, let's get the equipment in, and then we'll give them a shot of what the rack looks like with all the equipment in. Now, viewers, we've completed setting up the system. we placed the Niagara components of the Classic line in the rack system. We just did a nifty little listening session. Um, my initial impression was the racks totally cleaned up the, the system. Very impressed, Bruce. Very impressed. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, again, Still Point's philosophy as a company to reduce noise uh, without any coloration. And so, uh, you know, all of our products that we carry are about noise reduction in all different aspects. Uh, the still points that you see, uh, their main, and electronics, their main gain is we're reducing the noise that's created by current going through all the parts in the electronics. So if you look at your piece of electronics and you see the gazillion parts in the unit, understand each one of those parts are singing a micro vibration. 
very low amplitude vibration. If you wanted to see these, they're fast and they're low amplitude. Still points filtering is designed to filter from 20 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz when 100 nanoseconds down to 20 nanoseconds. What we're describing is a micro amplitude wave that's very fast. And so uh, that's why we have all of our dealers, all of our distributors do in-home demos because again, for you as a consumer, since you've never heard it, how can they describe what it is? Well, that's very well put, and uh, I can just sum that up, that when before, with the old rack, the old system, we had a blurriness to the sound, we had a muddiness to the bass, we had a very nice organic sound, and the representative from Niagara was here and thought the system sounded very, very good, but this system is transformed. This system now sounds so dynamic, it's as if I've doubled the power to the speakers. And these are not easy speakers to drive. We're driving them with Niagara Classic Line. These are Rido D4.1s. This is one of the best systems I've ever heard in my life, and it's now due to still points. I think it really was the finishing touch to the system. Thank you, Peter. And uh, we look forward to you having fun playing with all type of equipment and, and all type of systems and, and hearing what we do with it. Um, yeah, one of the nice things is you and I communicate, so when you review a piece of equipment, I can know where to put the uh, still points on the product because you're going to have experience with it. That's what it's all about, folks, and that's why you talk to your dealer and distributor. Uh, they're the folks with experience. Uh, Bruce personally sets up each uh, dealer distributor himself so that they know exactly how to implement this technology.